Okay, everybody, I'm taking this video picture of my arm so you can see what I gotta go through as a result of being a gang stalking victim. This is all poison ivy. Okay, look at all of it. I'm trying to get the right light here. Okay, it's all over my arm, both arms. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is like the 30th time this has happened. Uh, it's all over my arms, all over my forearms, all over my elbows. Okay, that's the one arm, that's the left arm, this is the right arm. Okay, you can see it's all over. I'm trying to get the best light. Now, I'll tell you why and how this happened as soon as I get done showing it to you. Lighting in here isn't the best. This is all poison ivy all over my arms. Okay. And it's on my face too, I'll show you that in a minute. top of my arm. It's all over my forearm as well. And it's on my arm up here. It's it's all it's all over my arms. Now this is where it got on my face. It's just it's in its last day of healing so I don't know how well you can see it but yesterday my whole face was swelled up right here. Okay. It's all up in here, here, on my eyelids, both eyelids, okay? And up above my eyebrows. Okay. And this is because I had to walk in a bunch of brush to hurry up for one and get out of sight. I'm an organized stalking, gang stalking targeted individual in La Jolla, California. I've been made homeless as a result. I've tried to report this crime to the, uh, three different police agencies at least. SDS, uh, SDSU police, UCSD police, and uh, SDPD. I was told no each and every time. I've also emailed and sent, um, emailed the San Diego District Attorney's Office on numerous occasions and tweeted them as well, as long as, as well as the County of San Diego and San Diego Police Chief Zimmerman. And not, oh, and I got them all over my ears. I got the poison ivy all over my ears as well. On both sides, on the actual ear and behind it. Okay, on both ears and on my neck. So, pretty much, I got poison ivy on at least 25% of my body. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not making this video for you to feel sorry for me. I'm making this video so you can see what I got to go through just to try and survive this crime while I'm being intentionally kept in the victimization of it. Absolutely. So, the as a result, see what I did was I walked into this vine after I, I fell in a bush, for one. Then I had to move a bunch of vines and, and, and fallen tree limbs and stuff in order to get to a specific area. As a result of having to do it right away while carrying my property with me as I'm moving all these branches and stuff, I fell twice. Uh, I got it on my arms and stuff. Um, uh, in between when I had my jacket on and off and I walked right into a vine that went right across my eyebrows and then brushed up against the side of my face so my whole entire eyeball this right eye has been swollen for the last four and a half days it's kept me up at night and I'm gonna even go as far as telling you some additional absolute truth I'm camping in San Diego I've been made homeless as a result of being a victim of this crime. You can go to Google and type in organized stalking and or gang stalking creating homelessness of targets. Now, they create the homelessness to exploit it, to exploit the target. I made a bunch of videos concerning this. You can go to YouTube. I'm sorry, you can go to Google and type in UCSD and and law library are they networking gang stalking. I've had to move to at least 11, at least 11 different camping areas in order to avoid the police and being evicted from these camping areas by them, but yet they won't take a police report concerning me being gang stalked, even though they've been shown massive audio evidence, text messages, they've sent to my phone even letters they sent me through the mail okay so I, I think you should just go to Google and type in police and gang stalking and look at what comes up all right so check this out as a result of me recently having to move um twice uh, actually three times just in the past 
22 days. I've had to move three times. Uh, what, basically what I'm telling you is that it's very hard when you're moving to carry everything you need with you. The main objective is to stay warm at night when you're sleeping. So you got to carry your sleeping bags. You got to carry enough stuff with you in order to keep you warm. Uh, two pairs of socks, uh, multiple shirts, multiple flannels, long johns, uh, your backup underwear, which I haven't been able to change my underwear now for three days because of these sick rats. Because I was only able to carry so much with me. And they stole my bike two days ago. And the bike wasn't even a month old. Total loss just concerning the theft of the bike and the damage to the bike locks because they bolt cutted them. Uh, over $200. Okay, because they also had $30 inner tubes in them. Yeah, because they kept flattening my tires, so I had to buy those self-inflating tires, inner tubes, 15 bucks a piece. The bike wasn't even a month and a half old. Okay, they stole that two days ago. Then the cost to replace it, another additional 150 at least. Yeah, so we're looking at close to $340 it cost me in the last two days because of these filthy red-ass whores. They also stole my bikes in order to compel me to take the bike into the area where I'm currently resting at. Okay, I'll put it to you that way. All right, and they did that in order to make it more physically hard, uh, in order to induce more physical hardship on me in order to take the bike with me coming and going to that place. They will do anything and everything to cause you to go through mental duress, emotional duress, psychological duress, physiological duress, and physical duress. Because that's what this campaign is all about. It's breaking you down mentally, physically, and financially. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the additional statement that I was going to make was this. As a result of camping, and sometimes when you got to move from one camping area to another one, you don't exactly, uh, you don't exactly remember to take everything with you, or that, or or you might not be able to take everything with you. The point being is, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had to go to the bathroom. So what I did was, uh, when I went number one uh, in a urine bag, I accidentally wiped myself with a napkin that I woke my, wiped my arms with. So guess where I got poison ivy at now? Do you have any idea what it's like to have poison ivy down there? So, I'm trying to sleep in the middle of the night and I got poison ivy itching me all over the place. Okay? So now you can see what I gotta go through and this is about the 30th time, the 30th time at least, that I've had poison ivy all over my body as a result of me having to find uh, hiking areas really fast, okay, and then prop them up and prep them up to where they at least got some decent security parameters, i.e. I prop up branches and, and, and bushes and stuff quietly. So if anybody tries to approach me, I'll hear them approach me before they get too close. It's another aspect of why I get um, poison ivy on me. Another thing is that I gotta find areas to hide my property. My sleeping bags, my pajamas, my backup clothes. You would not believe, you just would not believe the, the money I have went through as a result of being a victim of this crime. So I wanted to show you what I gotta go through. Look at my eye. Now, like I've said, it's on its last stages of healing. So I don't know how, I don't, I don't even know if it's sold up because I don't have a mirror on me right now. But yesterday, I, when I went to Walmart, I looked in the mirror and both my eyes were red, massive red underneath them okay they were all crinkled up and swollen up okay I had to put buy sunglasses again because I, I went through $25 in sunglasses just in the past two months because I lost both pairs as a result of uh, having to move in a hurry and they fell off my belongings when I backtracked to find them couldn't find them so actually I went through 30 because I had to buy the third pair to replace them so that's thirty dollars just in the past two months on sunglasses, which I gotta get because you gotta understand something. Organized talking gang stalking targets. We're harassed every day, creatively, overtly, directly. We are we are mentally harassed every day, everywhere we go. We are we are put through massive physical exhaustion. I had to let me tell you what I went through as a result of them stealing my bike. I had to walk two and a half miles with a 16 pound backpack on my back carrying at least a 23 pound duffel bag. I had to walk two and a half miles. Okay? With extra clothes on because when I come back to my camping areas, I never know if they're going to ha uh, have stolen my stuff. So I at least got to have enough stuff on me wearing on my person to keep me warm at night. And here, let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about concerning expense. 
I had to I had to buy enough things in order to be able to create three to four different hiking areas so I could run to each one because I knew they'd stalk me to each one and the way they're stalking me propping up people around me to say gang stalk gang stalking gang stalker oh my god gang stalk suck my dick in that way everywhere I go I got a thousand audio files to prove it so I had two motives. One, to, t to since I know they're stupid enough to have me gang stalked along all my routes, they're, st they're, they're literally that stupid. Yet, another reason why they do it though is because they're completely confident because they know that they're attached to judges, prosecutors, public defenders, DA's office. Okay, so who am I going to be able to get any help from? The filthy rats that are perpetrating this shit are in the system where this target should be able to run to for help as a result of being a crime victim. So it was still though my goal to at least prove this is happening to me so I could at least prove gross negligence of duty to the police by not investigating it and by own police reports concerning it. So the way I prove it is predict what these rats are going to do before they do it, i.e. putting people up along my routes to stage assaults, stage police arrests for illegal lodging, tickets for trespassing, tickets for illegal lodging, illegal encroachment. So what I do in my tape recorder, my video camera, emails, petitions, blogs, I predict what they're going to do before they do it. And then when they do it, it'll prove this crime is happening to me from hiking area to hiking area to hiking area to hiking area to hiking area along my routes as well, which I've already indisputably proven. Go to YouTube. I'm sorry. Go to Google and type in UCSD and Law Library are they networking gang stalking. Massive amounts of evidence in that blog. And what's in that blog is not even 0.01% of the evidence that I got. And you'll, you're going to see hundreds of videos of this shit being sent around me everywhere I go, every single day. They've sent me text messages, letters in the mail, everything. Okay, so fellow American citizens, so what I did was I went to Walmart over the last two and a half years and I bought everything that I needed in order to compile three to four, even five different kits for different hiking areas. Uh, heat warmers, uh, clothes, sleeping bags, uh, long johns, socks, underwear, shirts, bras, everything you need in order to stay warm and sleep. Food, okay? They just recently banned me from one whole area park, even though the park ranger admitted on video that they came there as a direct result of retaliation because I sent San Diego Police Chief Zimmerman indisputable proof I'm being gang stalked and more on Twitter. He admitted, wide openly admitted it on video, and then lied about it on the stand at the evidentiary hearing, and my public defender wouldn't allow the video to be shown. Ah, that little skinky bitch. Her name is Alex McDonald. Anyways, and now they're attempting to try and give me uh, links that I can go to in order to get shelter, when I know it's nothing but bullshit because I've already caught her and three prosecutors and four public defenders saying the same exact thing. And what they said was, was caught on tape being set around me in Rose Canyon where the illegal lodging ticket was given to me at, where the park ranger confessed. All right, so anyways, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you just some stuff that I had to buy, okay, for backup stuff. Because I never know when I come back to an area if they're going to prop up homeless men. They even sent me text messages stating we're going to prop up homeless men to camp around you. And that's done to psychologically motivate you to move in order to avoid incidences like assaults, robberies, rapes, property theft, stuff like that. So they'll wait until I leave an area, I come back to it, and my, either my property's gone and or homeless people will be there. This is done to psychologically motivate you to pick another spot. Now, there's only so many spots in San Diego because there's so many homeless people and, and because there's not a lot of land. But most of the land in San Diego is our hills. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this shit. These are a bunch of heat warmers that I had to buy. This is like the, at least the 15th stack of them that I've had to buy. And this is a smaller stack compared to what I usually buy. Look at all of them. Okay, this is a smaller stack compared to what I usually buy. I had to buy another... Um, where did I put that at? It's right here. Oh, this cost me $12 again yesterday. I just, it's, it's hot right now because I, I put some lighter fluid in it earlier to make sure it works okay. I got two other ones that are at, at a different area, okay, along with some other gear. This right here in itself costs 13 bucks. okay? The Zippo lighter fluid costs 2 That's not including the massive amount of monies I went through concerning, um, batteries just for my video camera and batteries for my tape recorder to catch these filthy rats. I had to buy these long socks. Do you have any idea? I bet I went through at least $200 in socks. Okay. And I'm banned from a certain property, which I got a massive amount of property hidden on it as a result of, of uh, law enforcement lying and then me being banned from it. 
Yeah, they waited until I dropped it off and then banned me from it. Yeah, can you believe that shit? And you wanna know why they did that? They did that so when, on any day or night when I go back to get any of it, they can stage and prop up events through illegal GPS tracking and arrest me or give me a ticket for it so they can continue this expedition. Expolu absolutely. This is organized crime in a system, baby cakes. So, uh, all right, so now, uh, these are a pair of long socks that I bought. I actually bought two pairs, and that way they can, these can be put on my body along with long johns. And here's another thing that I do. Where's it at? Uh, those cost four bucks at Walmart. This is a this is blood plastic bubble wrap. And what I do with these is that I is that I uh, I've only I've been taking one that I get at Ross and cutting it in two, and then taping it together in order to wrap it around my legs. Okay. Uh, uh, and then just pull it out from underneath my pants in the morning. And that way all I gotta do is get up in the morning, okay? And, cause I can always take off the socks uh, down the road and just carry them with me, which actually adds weight to my duffel bag. Which is, you see, I got, I got a bunch of files, laptop, tape recorders. This bag right here itself weighs at least 13 pounds on my back. Gotta carry it every day. I've been having to carry a backpack that weighs at least 13 pounds on my back every day for 10 full years. No, actually for 12. Because the open gang stalking started towards me in 2001. Okay. And then it escalated on a massive scale openly towards me three days before the student loans came in, which were coerced for me to take out by some in individuals that infiltrated my life in Michigan. So what I do is I buy this plastic bubble wrap because it's light to carry with me. I can keep it on my legs if I have to, okay? And then I tape it together after I wrap it around my legs, okay? This is lighter than a pair of jeans to carry with me to keep me warm. So you can see the, I, I've, I bet I've spent at least 20 bucks on, on bubble, uh, pu uh, plastic bubble wrap. The money I've spent on garbage bags to cover my tent and to uh, put my property in and, and, and then hide it is at least $200, at least, because I buy the 55 gallon contractor bags, okay, to keep the grain outside of my, um, uh, from coming into my tent. The money that I've spent on tents alone is at least $500, at least, at least. So this is just an example, just a brief example. Of the, I, bet I, I bet since I've been in San Diego that I've had to spend at least I'm not even going to say it because they'll use it against me. They'll say, Leslie's spending all of her money because she thinks she's being gang stalked. She thinks so, therefore, we better take legal custody of her because she's not, she can't take care of herself. She won't get out of the homelessness she's in, even though the homeless, the gang stalking created it. But they won't investigate the gang stalking, but they'll come to my area and arrest me or give me tickets for illegal lodging. So Google gang stalking and police, gang stalking and park rangers. Gang stalking and prosecutors, gang stalking and public defenders, gang stalking in DA's office, gang stalking in the FBI. You understand? It's organized crime in the system at the federal, state, and local level, and they work as a syndicate. And basically, I've already so I've already made videos and blogs and tweets concerning what, the entire scope of the criminal motivation of why this is happening to targets, and they've been put in that blog. So again, go to YouTube. I'm sorry, go to Google, and type in UCSD and Law Library. Are they networking gang stalking? All right, I gotta go.